Welcome to Demon Tweaks. Today we're going to be talking about air filters and in particular ITG filters. I'm joined here by Richard and Richard you're going to tell us a little bit about the offering from ITG and um, the company in general so fire away. That's right. Um, so ITG is a Coventry based business. We've been established for over 30 years now and we've been traditionally well known for making um, uh, foam air filters like you can see on the table here. Um, we've also just recently re launched uh, a range of pleated uh, Maxigen filters, so I'll tell you about, more about those in a minute. Great. Um, but yeah, the, the core business has been there for over 30 years and we're essentially a motorsport manufacturing air filter setup. So everything we're doing is essentially for motorsport, but it finds its way onto the road cars and all of the performance cars and track day cars and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I guess that kind of brings us on nicely to sort of like panel filters, you know. I guess most people are familiar with something like this, the sort of stock kind of, you're going to tell me that that's pretty naff and you're going to tell me the reasons why we should well, replace that. Well, look, th I mean, they are a fantastic filter. Paper is an excellent filtration medium, but only in the short term. What we're doing at ITG, and, and, and bear in mind, all these things are done here in the UK. We're buying our, our, our reticulated foam from the uh, supplier in the UK. Uh, the new filters are being made in the UK too. But the paper filters are often um, made made abroad. Um, they're coming in, and actually, you can buy various different grades of paper filter too. If you buy a good quality paper filter, when it's brand new, it's very very good. It's good for flowing air, and it's good for uh, for catching dust and dirt. However, if you want to get more power, you need to try and increase the pore size or the hole size, so more air needs to come through. So to get more air through, we actually lose a little bit of the ultimate filtration capability as far as dust capturing is concerned, but we do gain more power. So right. there's a, there's a trade-off for one for the other. Uh, so the paper filter is good, and it has a home, it clearly, in a standard car, uh, a standard air filter box in your, in your stock car. However, when you're trying to make a, an upgrade, always the first port of call is an air filter and, and it's a panel replacement filter which uh, yeah which we've got here and the important thing for us is because we're making it here in the UK we're making it really carefully and we're making it with some precision as opposed to injecting like they do with the, uh, the sort of stock paper filters mm -hmm. rather than sort of injecting the, the sort of polyurethane or the, the sort of orange goo that you see around the outside of the edge of yeah, it. Got it. We're doing it in, in, a, in a sort of polyurethane and we're pouring it in by hand very carefully and those videos are actually available on our own website to be Great. fair. So cool. you, we'll you, can, you can see, yeah you can see that, so put a link in the video. Absolutely. Wicked. So, so then that's kind of the first step, right? That's, that's you right, know, yeah. quite a lot of people first step in doing a bit of tuning and performance upgrades, change the air filter that's right. to, to something like this. And then you then have induction kits, right? The, yep. I guess the idea is we're getting more air in through the engine, we're getting more power. That's right, yeah. If you want to, so first step, obviously panel filter, as we've said. Second step would be induction kit. Um, that induction kit could be a full induction kit, which is a fully developed kit that's been put together with various different parts. So that'll be silicon hoses. Um, it could have a, a box like the one we've got here. Um, it could be a short box, a long box, different size box. We've got a whole range of those. Or it could be just a filter on its own. So a full kit would comprise of everything you need to, um, you know, fit to your. I mean, Yaris GR is a common is mm -hmm. a common application now. So something for Yaris GR is something that we've worked pretty tirelessly on to get right. So you'll you'll have the full kit. So it comes with a scoop, a plastic scoop, the yeah. clips, the catches, everything you need, all your hose clips, the whole sh the whole shooting match basically. Great. As opposed to if you've got an unusual application on a race car or a rally car where you're trying to create your own induction system and for that you would use an independent maxigen filter. Okay. That kind of leads me nicely on to just yeah. explaining a little bit about our, our latest range that's just, just been launched. So typically they're a clamp-on filter where you're just using a, a, a hose clip around the, the base of the filter here to attach it but we've actually got some spun aluminium parts of which live inside there to create a nicer shape for the air. So this is a, this is a range now that we've got in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, they're obviously all conical, but they're going from the largest one here, like uh, the one that I use on my own rally car, uh, right the way down to a smaller size. We've got some that are specifically just clamp on, um, but the, the, this, this is an option, okay, it's, it's, it's a thing that you have to buy, but I think it's worth it. It's, it's more important for airflow. Great. Just tell me, so uh, on that, so I guess that is the shape of the metal on the inside, right. isn't get creating any hard edges to literally stop the airflow. So it's all designed to give the maximum amount of air into the 
into your engine as possible, right? Yeah, I mean, if if there's a long if there's a long pipe work, so if your turbo's sort of at the back at the back corner of the of the engine bay and the filter's living at the front corner, it may be that actually that that doesn't really matter too much because okay. it's got a long path to get to, but. Certainly all the touring car teams and some of the, the sort of top level motorsport teams that we've come to, often the filter is quite close to the, to the turbocharger itself. So what's important is that we're creating a nice shape to go straight from the filter uh, straight into the turbocharger. Fantastic, that's brilliant. Um, obviously, I noticed there's not really, I mean, there's some foam versions as well. So there's a kind of a little bit of a change in tact for you guys there, is that fair to say? Like what, what would be the reason of going down this sort of pleated route versus the foam? Uh, basically and honestly, we ju we just don't want to miss out. I mean, there's been some demise of some of the other manufacturers, some of our competitors. They had big ranges. They've pulled some of the the part numbers from the ranges, and I've just seen an opening in the market where I've decided to to create a um, you know a pleated conical filter, and that's not because I feel like they're better or or worse. It's just because traditionally we've always made everything out of foam. Um, I mean, it's only a small one here, but we we do filters that are this size that are made from um, reticulated foam. One of them, uh, obviously foam filters, so this one in front of me here, um, it's a depth loading media. So the dust is coming in through the intake system, it's sitting on the surface of the, of the foam, and then it steadily makes its way through. And as the layers get more dense, the dust can't get all the way through to, to make its way into your engine. Got it. Whereas the pleated ones are a surface loading media. So the dust comes in, um, it sits on the face of the filter itself, and then you know hopefully that's that's a blockage. The problem is with pleated filters, and as we've experienced, and why we've never sort of gone down this road before, is because we've never really had a way of sort of stopping the the, the sort of pleats blocking up. But then we recently decided that we would we would be able to make a foam oversock, which is available as an additional sort of um, purchase yep. to fit neatly over the top of. If I just sleeve that on there for you. Yep. So by putting that foam oversock in, we've kind of got the best of both worlds there, particularly for high-powered turbocharged cars. For a normally aspirated car, like we would use on this Megaflow filter here, um, or, or this one here, a sausage-shaped round one, or indeed a straight-sided one, it's not so important because they're usually normally aspirated because that's what they're going on, carburetted or throttle bodies. Mm -hmm. If it's a turbocharged car, it sort of draws and pulls the air that it requires. Yeah. But by putting the, the foam oversock on, you're essentially stopping all the bugs and leaves and bits and bobs getting stuck inside the pleats because that's the that's a real problem with a pleated filter. They block up quick. The foam ones uh, will, will sort of let you go faster for longer, which is why we've been popular with a lot of endurance racing, Le Mans. Uh, we've, we've been on winning Le Mans teams for a number of years, a lot of historic motorsport where there's endurance racing and they're still using carburetors, they're still using this type of filter. Some of the very high-powered turbocharged cars, um, they're seeing that they want to use, particularly the American market, mm -hmm. they're wanting a pleated filter. Right. So I guess in honesty, ITG have just gone to a pleated filter because that's what the market require. So we've done it for no other reason than we don't want to miss out on the opportunity. And there's a lot of people want to buy a product from us because we make it really nicely here in the UK and they know that we're not importing any parts from, from abroad. Everything's, everything's done here in the UK in our factory. And because of that, I think we can make a really nice job of a pleated filter. Great. So we're not, you know, just churning them out. It's actually well thought through every single application, and and obviously the they're made in the UK, and the the quality is there, and you can obviously quality check that from source almost. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've we've got a, we've done a, a full CFD program on the uh, the aluminium spun part. We've done we've done a lot of testing for dust ingress on yeah. our pleated cotton. We've designed this pleated cotton filter to run ideally with an oversock. We want people to buy an oversock to keep to keep their pleated filter nice and to keep it sort of fresh and not only does it look good if it's your show car or it's yeah. whatever, but also from a motorsport application, this is being widely used now, certainly within touring car. Brilliant. I guess kind of that brings us on nicely to the care and maintenance side of these filters, you know. Uh, something like one of the paper filters that we saw earlier, you just whip it out, pop a new one in, right? That's not the case with these. So how do we how do we look after them? I guess it's a different process for the pleated versus the foam. 
Yeah, well, honestly, I, I think uh, certainly if we go back to uh, the pleated paper, as I said, that yeah, that pleated paper is a, is a good filtration medium, but it blocks up quick, and if it gets damp or moist, it doesn't make a very good job of filtering anymore. What we can do is, and, and what we can do still over the pleated with, with foam, yep. is we can clean and re-oil using a clean and re-oil, re-oiling kit, and it's as good as new. It's back to exactly the day you bought it. There's a short clean video on our on our own website, which we can again, yeah, we'll link put, it as well. Put, yeah. put a link in, and then guys can see. It's like a 60 second video, and it just shows how to make sure that you you're cleaning and reoiling your filter carefully. As far as pleated filters are concerned, I know some of the other manufacturers out there are saying that they'll warranty them forever. Yeah. Well. I think that something that's made essentially out, out of you know, cotton gorse with a, a sort of a stainless steel epoxy coated metal mesh encapsulating those cotton gauze layers, it will last a very long time. But if you clean it, you will disrupt its, uh, its fibres and you'll actually make it flow air better, but you will spoil its capabilities of collecting dust. Fantastic. So you can clean them yeah. and re-oil them. But I'd say it's better to put a foam oversock and cle- keep the pleats clean yeah, and great. just keep keep cleaning the foam oversock. Brilliant. And then when this gets dirty, just replace it. Cool. And then I guess one then, just to put the, the keyboard warriors to, to rest, if you like, is someone will always say, oh, oil in your filter is not good because it's going to affect sensors, blah, 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 blah. What, what do you have to say about that? Well, I mean, I get asked this question every now and again, and I, and I don't think we're guilty of, of starting the, the problem. I mean, I've worked for ITG for, for 18 years, and I've probably seen it three or four times in that 18 years where, you know, something's been sat in a carrier bag for a period of time, or it's been sat in a really hot environment, and then, and then maybe the, that filter was over-oiled at some sort. But I really just don't think it's a problem with ITG because un- unlike us going to a manufacturer saying, do you do foam oil? We'll have some, please. We've gone through a f- full test and development program yeah. to make sure that what we sell is what f- fits with our product. Um, as far as the uh, foam filters are concerned, mm-hmm. these are all oiled out the factory yeah. and we do it properly and carefully in-house. Um, the two guys that are doing it, there's only two people that do it in the building wow. um, and they're doing it correctly. We haven't had one issue with a MAF with this and our oil at all. Perfect. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, absolutely ideal. Um, you loosely touched on it before about the kind of motorsport side of things with touring cars yeah. and Le Mans and things like that. You've got to tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a shame, really, because we've got some great stories, but we often can't share them because there's NDAs in place and so on and so forth. But I think, I think it's OK for me to say that if you're a, a, a sort of sports car brand in, in the UK and you're making a limited run of vehicles, mm-hmm. you would definitely choose ITG from that sort of design flexibility. Actually, most of those are still on foam as well. Okay. So all of the F1 customers, all of the touring car customers, um, in fact, one of the touring car customers has just switched because he's got availability of a foam oversock. Um, so on the touring car team, uh, uh, the team that have just switched, okay. the other touring car teams are still on foam yeah. um, with, with, with obviously uh, different layers, different pore sizes. We do some cool stuff for them. And we, bur- we bur- basically work on like pressure drop figures. Okay. So designer will come to us and he'll say what he's looking to try to achieve from a pressure drop, uh, from a surface area. And if we've got a really, a really small sort of... Um, uh, space envelope, if if that be the right phrase, yeah. we we might we might flip to a, a cotton gauze because you can get more sort of um, surface area okay, for the physical size. So if you imagine if we were building a filter that did this big, if mm-hmm. it had pleats in it, the surface area, if you sort of stretched bigger. it out, would be a lot bigger. Yeah. So for a very small application where you've got a lot of power because the space envelope is too small, then maybe we would flip to a, a cotton gauze. But again, you know. In any of these air filters, generally speaking, it's it's the bigger the bigger the better. Yeah, okay. you know, just get get the biggest one yeah. and you can fit on the car. So yeah, uh, Le Mans, Formula One, British touring car, um, you know, rally cars around the world. Yeah, we're, we're supplying to everybody who's anybody a really nice product, but I can't mention any specific <laughs> names. I'm afraid it's just one of those things. Well, I think you kind of the the subtle name drops and things like that in there yeah. have, uh, have taught us something, and I, you know. I think I know uh, what I'd be choosing. Yeah, that's well, for sure. <laughs> I think I think the thing the thing to take away from this is that with all that's going on in the world, we're making a very a very nice product very carefully here in Britain, and we're not making it in a hurry because attention to detail is our key thing 
and um, as long as I'm at that business I'm going to continue to make sure that um, that's our business ethos to make things properly and the guy that makes a filter that fits on a, a winning Formula One car is the same guy that makes a filter that you know goes on your track day car so that's a pretty cool story in itself. It absolutely is and I think on that note it's probably time to wrap up the video and I think that based on the fact that you've got winning Formula One cars using ITG filters um, I think it kind of goes without saying which one you should choose to put on your car so thank you very much for your time Richard yeah, thanks. I uh, really appreciate that I'm going to take one of these probably this big one given that you said that the biggest is best, biggest and is best I'm yeah. going to leave you here and I'm going to go and pop this on my car now. thanks a lot <laughs> cheers